So I have a puzzle for you. How do you get this and this to do this? Well, today we're going to find out. This video is brought to you by Global Ordnance. Go check them out at www.globalordnance.com. Special thanks to Banberry for providing us with a great recording setup. If you're in the Houston area and you need a place to do any type of recording or band practice, definitely the place to go. Open 24 hours, you simply log in, uh, see if the spot is open, uh, register it, and then you simply get your access code and you come and go as you please. You can't really beat that, especially since a lot of the places are closed right now for recording. Be sure to check them out at bambarracks.com. Hello, my fellow energetic enthusiasts, and welcome to a new episode of Ordnance Lab. I'm Jake, the mad scientist, and discount, Sean, uh, dis discount uh, Jim Carrey is behind the camera this time around, obviously because he's done his screen. And today we have a special treat that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, and it's finally come to fruition despite many uh, setbacks and a lot of other hindrances and a whole bunch of filming problems and uh, I can go on, the, the laundry list goes on forever, but it's Coke bottle shaped charges. Now you're probably wondering, Coke bottle shaped charges, what is that? Coke uh, fueled explosive? Uh, explosives uh, funded by Coke? Well, it's definitely not that because if that was the case, we'd be flush with cash. Nope, simply we're using Coke bottles as a shaped charge liner to punch through metal. So uh, many, many moons ago when I was a kid, I was about 13, I purchased a book called the Improvised Munitions Handbook. Now, back in the day before the internet was a sort of a thing, it was, at the time it was a thing, but it wasn't really the much the, the thing that it is today. Well, you had to order books through like different publishing houses, sort of like Paladin Press, which was uh, kind of like that specialized in like, you know, alternative information books, like Poor Man James Bond and well, Improvised Munitions Handbook. So I got a hold of it, and it was funny too because my mom was always worried that the FBI was going to watch, it was watching for us. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> such innocent times back then. But in there was a page on using making improvised shaped charges. And one of them was the Coke bottle shaped charge. Now, when I first started making explosives at the wee age of 13, I was not proficient enough in manufacturing, say, C4 or a sufficient amount of TNT to make this, nor did I have the space to really detonate enough of this explosive to get away with it. Well, now that you know I own or co-own an explosives laboratory, well, we can do this, and we can do it with some great accuracy. Well, as bad as bad as accurate as you can get with a Coke bottle and some plastic as the liner. So, how is this going to work? Well, so we take a Coke bottle here. Now, it's not going to be full. Um, this one's just for a prop, and I'm not a big fan of drinking Coke. I don't really like soda. I don't really, you know, it's it's bad for you. But anyway, is this just for demonstration? You're using this as both the standoff and the liner. So how this works is we took plastic, in this case, sort of like this PVC sleeve, and we fitted it over the Coke bottle. Now, this is a little bit larger than the Coke bottle, but this the other one we did, we fitted it to the Coke bottle, and it fit pretty snug, and then we sealed it. And what it is is, if you can imagine this a little bit higher up, this is going to contain the explosive. Now, we use a liquid explosive. Uh, plastic explosive is also ideal, too. Something that fills up so that there's no gaps inside. But as you can see here, this right here is acting like the liner, sort of like with a normal shaped charge, like a like a industrially made or uh, precision made shaped charge, which has a pre-shaped cone. And what this does is that when the explosive detonates, this right here is going to create an explosive jet that focuses, much like a, a light through a lens, to a point, and is able to put that energy in a very small area and penetrate, say, a large amount of steel. So this right here is an improvised device because obviously you don't want to use a Coke bottle as your primary design of a shape charge, but it works. So I had low hopes for this situation. I, I, I didn't expect too much out of this, but to my surprise, it was actually not that bad. But uh, what we did for this one, we uh, assembled several different targets to hit uh, with the Coke bottle and to see how it performs uh, against steel and concrete. So let's head over the range and see how this works out. This project has been in the works for about a year. We ran into a lot of issues as some of the Coke bottle shape charges didn't properly lens the explosion. Or they didn't even detonate at all, which is even more frustrating. Moving on, the first test is to set the baseline for comparison. We will use this conical shape charge often used in the oil and gas field. Despite their relatively small size, they are highly efficient and very effective. 
they have an alloy liner and a small quantity of a pressed explosive as the charge. We will test this shape charge against a hunk of metal that Cody supplied us. We placed it at the thickest part, which measured in at about 155 millimeters. This charge will easily punch right through it though. Let's watch. Here is the entrance hole of the shape charge. You can see it's a nice concentric circle indicating the incredible precision of these shape charges. The business end of the block shows another nicely punched hole. The penetrator continued forward for about 16 centimeters past the block into the ground. Very impressive. Using the same block, we will use the thinner section for the coke bottle shape charge, as it will not rival the conical shape charge at all. This section has a thickness of about 28 millimeters. We placed the coke bottle shape charge centered to the plate and primed it with an electric blasting cap. Each charge will contain 300 grams of our composite liquid explosive, with a detonation velocity of approximately 7,000 meters a second. Let's see how it performs. The charge detonated with an impressive blast, but we were worried that it did not work upon first inspection. We had a lot of failed charges prior to making this video. Here's what the blast surface looked like before we cleaned it off. As we started to inspect the target, we discovered that the coke bottle shape charge did penetrate the metal. The exit hole was heavily protruded and warped. It was also clogged with glass that re-solidified. Once we cleaned up the target, we could see the charge did a decent job punching through the plate. The hole isn't concentric like the conical shape charge though. This is to be expected as the coke bottle shape charge isn't made to great precision. This is very evident on the blast side as the hole is very asymmetrical. Despite this, the coke bottle charge did work. The next test involves using a series of steel plates stacked on top of each other. Each plate varied in thickness with a stacked total of approximately 25 millimeters. We placed the thickest plate on top and the charge on top of that. This target will behave differently than the solid plate as each plate will react independently unlike the solid target. The performance of this charge was a little underwhelming as expected. The charge did lens, but failed to penetrate past the first plate. The larger plates did get warped from the lens explosion. This close-up shot shows that the lens was not concentric and uniform as the penetration marks are asymmetrical. You can see the bottle ridges left a negative impression on the plate. Pretty cool. This third test involves using a steel beam with a large air gap. The idea is to see what happens to the penetration performance between two target plates with a gap of approximately 84 millimeters. The thickness of the steel is 6 millimeters at both facets, for a total of 12 millimeters of metal, and an overall thickness of 96 millimeters from facet to facet. The blast side of the target showed a perfect yet rather large penetration hole in comparison to the previous charges. The air gap definitely disrupted the penetration as the explosive jet only warped the opposite end. Still, a decent performance by the charge given the circumstances. The final test is against these two blocks of concrete. Unlike steel, concrete isn't malleable or ductile. It doesn't warp when exposed to shearing forces, unlike steel or other metals. The block should fracture into pieces as it absorbs the blast energy. We stacked two blocks for a total of roughly 50 millimeters. We placed our last charge on top and dead center. Let's see what happens. The blocks were blasted into dust. We found only bits and pieces scattered all over the test site. The blast also left a neat hole in the ground showing that the shape charge did form a lens jet. It was also rather concentric, which was a nice discovery. Overall, these charges were surprisingly effective given their crude nature. So you can see that the Coke bottle shape charge is actually relatively effective. Now, it's nothing in comparison to say a professional fabricated precision shape charge, 
Uh, but, you know, it gets the job done. It's an improvised device used in an expedient manner when you don't have professional resources, say machinery and whatnot, to, produ to, to create a perfectly shaped, uh, perfect shaped charge. And, I mean, the problem is with this is that you're, or I basically eyeballed the line, the explosive or the plastic liner around the Coke bottle. So it was a little bit off here and there, and therefore it doesn't produce a perfect uh, explosion, which will produce the lensing effect that you want from the shape of the from the liner going down into it against the base plate or the target, such as the metal. So it, it's kind of difficult because literally I was placing this on here, and then I had a um, I had a certain amount of adhesive, and then I had to level it, and well, it's not the greatest way to manufacture a shaped charge. But as you can see, despite that. And the amount of explosive that we use, because it's not the most efficient, um, the amount of explosive we use, we should have seen better performance, but hey, for what it's worth, it did all right. Now, this means that we can also test the other shape charges in the manual, such as the martini glass shape charge and the wine bottle shape charge. Now, I'm a big fan of the wine bottle shape charge. And uh, this one was, a, it was fun to make, though we went through numerous tests beforehand. We started filming to make sure we got it right. We actually set up a ton of these and they did not work. They detonated, but they didn't penetrate or we had some problem with some detonators, or the explosive was just not up to snuff in the velocity. Because it's very important to have a high velocity explosive when working with shaped charges. Low velocity explosives work, but you need a large amount, and then you get a point of diminishing return. You can't really have this large uh, volume of explosive here and getting, uh, but it's not gonna get the same effect to say a smaller quantity and around the liner that's a higher velocity. So the explosive that we use is definitely around the, the velocity of TNT, which is ideal. Anything higher than that's even better. But I hope you found this video informative. This is definitely gonna be stepping off into our next video, which is wine bottle shaped charges. And then after that, martini glass shaped charges, and then some other improvised shaped charges. Be sure to like and subscribe uh, and hit the notification button. I know a lot of people are wondering why aren't we putting a lot of videos of lately. We've actually been pretty steady with our release of videos. It's just that YouTube and Skynet, the algorithm just doesn't like us sometimes. I mean, go figure. We're a fun channel about uh, teaching about people about the world of explosives. And they're like, oh, you know, it's so horrible. I don't understand. You know, there, there's there's more to it than the nefarious uh, use of explosives, obviously. And special thanks to our Patreon uh, donors. You guys really are helping us out. It's going to some uh, great projects, especially since we're expanding our operations here at Ordnance Lab. But thanks for watching, and stay tuned for our next video here at Ordnance Lab. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to see more, and stay tuned for another episode here at Ordnance Lab.